using the Laplace transform, find the solution to the initial value problem, y prime minus 3y equals e to the 2t, y of 0 equals 2. Now, Laplace transform is going to take function f of t, it's going to return another function in the variable s. We'll define it as the improper integral from 0 to infinity of f of t e to the minus st dt. Here, we're integrating with respect to t, so we treat the s as a constant. Then we have to worry about whether our integral is defined or not. Now, to solve our problem, we need three properties. First, take the Laplace transform of e to the at, evaluate at s, it's going to be equal to 1 over s minus a. For the integral to converge, we're going to need s greater than a. Then, we have a derivative rule. Take the Laplace transform of y prime. It's going to be equal to the Laplace transform of y. We multiply by s, and then we subtract off y0. Finally, Laplace transform is linear. So that means if I take Laplace transform of a sum, we could split it up. If we have factors in front, numbers, we're allowed to pull them out. Now, how do we proceed? If I have two things equal to each other, take the Laplace transform of both, they'll stay equal. So, we're going to apply Laplace transform to both sides of our equation. What's going to come out? On the right-hand side, I get 1 over s minus 2, so that's property 1. On the left-hand side, I can use the linear property, pull apart the sum, factor out the minus 3. Now, I'm going to use our derivative rule to rewrite the Laplace transform of y prime. So it's going to be s times Laplace transform of y minus y0, which is 2. Then we want to isolate the Laplace transform of y. So that's just algebra. So I push all the non-Laplace transform of y stuff to the right side, keep the Laplace transform of y stuff on the left-hand side. Then when we collect everything, final answer winds up 2s minus 3 over s minus 2, s minus 3. Now, formal way to proceed, we're going to apply the Laplace transform inverse to both sides. So inverse Laplace transform, what does that do? Well, that's just going to cancel out the Laplace transform. So the idea is going to be, okay, we apply inverse Laplace transform to Laplace transform of y. That's just equal to y but it's also equal to the inverse Laplace transform of our expression here. So, what we do now is, we go to our list of Laplace transforms and see if we can recognize this. In this case, that's not going to be familiar, so it's going to mean we need to do more work. So, the next step is partial fractions, and then we recheck our list. For our partial fraction expansion, what do we have? I have only linear factors in the denominator, Exponents are equal to 1, so I have one term for each factor. So A over S minus 2 plus B over S minus 3. Clear out the denominators, and then target your zeros. So let S be equal to 3, and S equal to 2. So I get B equals 3, A equals minus 1. So here's our partial fraction expansion. We're going to apply L inverse, so the inverse Laplace transform. Now, that's also linear. So we could break apart the sum and then factor the numbers out. So we're interested in inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 2 and 1 over s minus 3. So we go to our list. If I have 1 over s minus a, the inverse Laplace transform is going to be e to the at. So we replace these with e to the 2t and e to the 3t. So that is our solution to the initial value problem. Of course, we check our answer. So we're just going to run these through the initial value problem to see that things work out. Now, first thing to note, y of 0. Okay, if we put 0 in for e to the 2t, e to the 3t, you get e to the 0, which is 1. What comes out of here is going to be a 2. So that checks out. Then we want to take the derivative. So what will happen? 2 comes down, so we have a minus 2 e to the 2t. 3 comes down, we have 9e to the 3t. Then we multiply by a minus 3. So that'll give me a 3e to the 2t minus 9e to the 3t. We add, and then we note that what comes out is an e to the 2t as expected. So our work checks out. 